Welcome to the Scariest Things Podcast, episode 35. Whoa. Uh, at, at each, each and every episode over 30, I'm like, this is... This is amazing that we're, that we're there. Oh, I thought, I thought, we're over to, oh, no, no. I thought you were thinking that my audio cue no, was, was Your audio high. cue is perfect. <laughs> so I'm, remark, I'm remarking on just, just the, the longevity of this podcast. That we've made a thing. Yeah, this is closing in on almost a year. Yeah, we're nine, almost nine months in on this thing. Nine um, months, yeah. So as uh, many of you know, we are doing our top 100 countdown uh, to the point where we have to apologize. We're a little bit late with this one. Um, but uh, we'll make it up to you because it's going to be extra cool. Uh, so we're doing today. Well, there is no light because this this pot this the, this series that we're doing is evergreen. This is forever and ever. This mm-hmm. is in, in perpetuity will not change. This is the best 100 <laughs> horror movies of all time until further notice. Until further notice, so uh, to change each and every week. So today uh, is numbers 80. To 71. Yep, 80 to 71. So we are, I mean, we're still getting uh, movies that qualify in the we're ashamed that we haven't seen it. Uh, definitely. Uh, definitely. And so there was a little bit of binging on our side to get to get through some of these things. Because it hit the audience to the uh, sort of the, 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 the variables that we use to judge this and the judges yeah. that we yeah. use to judge this. Right. So uh, pe- for- people understand... This isn't just us not seeing these movies right. and being being derelict horror movie fans. <laughs> this is a much more complicated algorithm, right? For those of you who have not been who, who are hopping in on the middle of the top one hundred review, which is kind of odd. Uh, <laughs> and, what we, and do yourself a favor, go back to start at one hundred, exactly, like everyone else. Uh, we have we have Don't gone cut in line, right? And yeah, no no tag backs. <laughs> um, we have. Enlisted the help of a lot of uh, horror insider experts, uh, journalists, uh, movie producers, directors. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a young actor. 30 um, to be precise. 30. Uh, and including some, to be honest, some of our best friends yep. and uh, some super fans of our website who ne- wanted nepotism, to participate. Nepotism, yep. craft, greed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, though Mike and I might be true charlatans at this <laughs> and, and be... You know, having to admit that we haven't seen every movie that's in the top 100. The charlatan yeah. Please, please recognize that what we what we had done was we had asked all 30 reviewers, including Mike and I, yep. uh, to select our top 25 horror movies, and we put a weighted aggregate to it. And for those of you not into probability of statistics, what that means <laughs> is there is more value to the number one film than there is to your number 25 film. Right. And once we take all those all those numbers together. Uh, we did a matrix-like spreadsheet. Yep, and we came up with 326 films, of which we have selected. It is an the, the impressive 100 impressive list. It's and there are going. There are some all-time classics that did not hit the waterline. Shockers! 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 I've Absolute already shockers. I've We've already covered a couple of them. I've already taken some crap that <laughs> Friday the Thirteenth didn't make the list. I'm ready to give more crap. Yeah. Uh, that's, <laughs> well, if you're here, taking it, it yeah. I'm giving it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your crap to yourself. Um, <clears throat> we. I think had, we had, we this we created this thing to create a debate, and I think we left the criteria completely open ended. Right. Um, so we've seen a real wide dis- uh, spread of the types of horror films that we're getting. Right. Uh, well, and I, like like all good like all good lists, mm-hmm. they obviously generate debate, mm-hmm. but they're also a good reference point too. Absolutely. I find myself going to a lot of top one hundred lists for um, a lot of different uh, genre. Uh, well, the the horror genre, mm-hmm. but then all the sub genres yeah. of horror, and looking through there, and I'm always surprised at the, the kind of films that are on there that I haven't seen. Guilty as charged. Yeah, so it's a good reference guide because I sure. had I had to <laughs> reference top top ten hillbilly horror movies, for example. <laughs> it's like it's not my not, not my bag, but right, uh, right. you find out what kind of creepy shit is out there from, a, for a, hillbilly there horror. There is a whole lot beyond Texas Chainsaw. Yes, there is. Texas Chainsaw is just the tip of the iceberg. So I and think, we might. Yeah. We might not not tonight or today or whatever time right. it is. We might get to 
the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think it'll go. It goes kinda, without saying. Kind of, sort of, maybe. That would have been. I think <laughs> there would be a, a lynching in Portland, <laughs> and that not shown up on the list uh, by there Chainsaw. There would have been a Chainsaw Massacre. That's right. <laughs> uh, so uh, the question is where? Right. For Texas Chainsaw. Right. Um, oh, and so if you just wait. If, for those of you who are going, where's my favorite movie? Wait. It's probably there. Um, yeah. I don't think that much in the top 20 is going to surprise our audience. No. But I think this no, is... No, there's, there's no shockers yeah, in the top 20. We are into the fun portion here because this is these are films that got, ah. they, they, they got multiple votes. Yep. Um, some of them are true favorites of maybe a couple of people. Yep. But we're beginning to see some of the kinds of films that would finish... 16th, 17th on a lot of lists. Oh yeah, for so, sure. Um, I, well, I thought there was a lot. I thought there was a lot of shockers from you know 100 down to 81. There was a lot of things in there that I thought, boy. Well, there was things I hadn't seen, like the Suicide Circle. Yeah. Uh, but then there were some you know very questionable films that we talked about, right. like oh I don't know. Uh, uh, Final Destination, <laughs> Event Horizon. <laughs> no, there's uh, fans for it. Yes, <laughs> but then there was like some some quality films that I, I definitely think should have made the list, like Candyman, Salem's Lot, It. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I'm surprised the, that the, the Changeling the, finished as low as it did. The Changeling, the Exorcism has, of Emily Rose, I think was is really solid. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, I vacillated a little bit on whether it should be in the top 100, but it's mm -hmm. it's right at 100, so I think that's probably appropriate. Right. So yeah, there were some definitely some I uh, definitely some shockers for me though. So so far, right. so far, and I think there might be a couple more shockers on the list and the, mm -hmm. in the in the next couple of lists. I think once we get past about sixty ish, then it's mm -hmm. going to become pretty per, not not entirely, but but you'll see a lot of your a lot of the fan favorites. One big debatable movie that's going to be in the top fifty, and I know that. Okay, okay, uh, well, but that will it'll be it'll be a no brainer. Charlie Brown's horror or not. Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the Halloween, the Charlie Brown Halloween special. I got a rock. Um, so today, uh, just as a little bit of a preview for the, the kind of stuff that you're going to yes. see, um, a couple of the all-time great Korean horror movies. Yeah, uh, a couple of compelling quasi ghost. Oh, story let's have preview. Let's get into it. Yeah, let's all right. do it. All right, no, 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 pre no preview. No pre right. This is get preview. All right, Campbell. <laughs> Campbell's putting his foot down. We're we're moving on. Let's so. get to it. You want to you want to do number eighty? Yeah, why don't you do number eighty? Because I don't know spit about this film. <laughs> okay, this is a tale of two sisters. Which is from South Korea. Korea. South Korea 2003. That right. is all I know. Right. Uh, I've tapped out my knowledge on so A Tale of Two Sisters. I I will admit that this is a movie that I watched today. <laughs> before so the pun. fresh in your head. Fence breaking new to me. Uh, and this this movie, let's see, who 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 really vouched vouched for this one? This is uh this is Gwen Callahan and uh Luke the uh, Pincelli, uh, Luca Pincelli, who does um, horror re uh, review and news, um, yes. and I sure hope I didn't botch the name of the podcast. But he's been—he was our first um, pod uh, website brother, yes, so to speak, to recognize us and to start following us. So, Luca, thank you so much for contributing uh, this list. I thought this was a beautiful movie. Uh, okay. This is—it's uh, a the, the story is a teenage girl sue me is uh, being treated for uh, shock and psychosis and mental institution and just returned home to re be reunited with her sister, Su Yeon. And I think, from what I understand, it's Lotus and Rose are those are so... Oh. So I think Sue must... There might be some floral kind of a sure, sure. Uh, aspect okay. to that. Um, this so is... Sue is like... Sue... <laughs> I <guess>. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I think it's a fairly common name. Very common name. Yes. Um, as most Korean names tend to be, <laughs> the, the, the Italians got lucky with everybody gets a different name. Yes. The Koreans got to share everybody 20 names. Everybody got to be a Sioux or a Kim. Yeah, and, and speaking both. from a guy or who's a got a Chinese name, I, <laughs> I can I can sympathize. Um, so uh, actually, this is actually the lead off. This is directed by Ji Woon Kim, and um, the Su Mi is played by uh, Su Jung M. Su Su Yeon. Okay, enough of the Sue's. Enough of the Sue's. Get to okay. the plot. All right, get to the plot. All right. Fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, there was too many Sue's. No, no, no offense to all the Sue's out there. You can. <laughs> we'll have all of the credits posted on the website. Long and the short of it is that there, that there's a there's a teenage girl who has returned back home where uh, she was been in a mental institution and there's an awkward reunion with the father, 
the stepmother. Uh huh. Always a problem. <laughs> always, always a, an issue. Yes. <laughs> and uh, her little sister. And uh, there's real palpable tension between mm-hmm. the mother, the stepmother, and and the girls, and the disaffected father. And this is this is a very complex movie, um, and it's a slow builder. Yeah. Um, it resembles a lot of um, audition and hereditary. Good night, mommy, which we'll mm. be talking about maybe a little later here. Maybe, and, maybe. Uh, it it has it has some sort of supernatural elements to it, Ooh, but it is essentially it's a like dysfunctional in, family, like as in ghosts. Yes, there's okay. there, there are there there is a ghostly condition. Do you find out who who is the ghostly condition? Or who's yes, or but who's it is responsible for the ghostly condition. The way that the that the direction plays out, and the way that the script uh, reveals itself, it it lays a twisty path of crumbs. There's a lot of crumbs oh, for you to try and piece together. Okay, okay. Um, and 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 so it puts a it, it is as much of a mystery mm-hmm. as it is a horror movie, as it is a family drama. Okay, um, and. It really doesn't explain everything. It ties everything up in the final ten minutes of the movie, and so oh, you're kind of going, "Interesting. How is this working out? What am I?" It, it does bring you in. It, it, right. it really it, it 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 lures you into the to the story because the acting performances are wonderful. Sure. Particularly, I think that the stepmother is, uh, is she's this gorgeous thing, but she yeah. also acts a lot with her eyes. And, oh, interesting. Um, there's a lot of like slow turnaround stare. Did I see something out of the corner of my eye? Or she will do the stare down with the with the, the sisters huh. because the, there's something there, Which there's, is no there's mean feet. There's, there's 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 accusations of of wickedness going back and forth between the daughters and the stepmother, and the father is unable to affect any of these changes. And then all of a sudden, there's this ghostly presence that injects itself, and they're all tied together. And it because the the big question is what happened to the mother. Interesting. Is and then, it is it is it uh, like old boy like uh, creepy in that like when you get the final punchline you go ugh. <laughs> some of the Korean yeah. some of the Korean films can be pretty sharp. There are there are moments of it that and I, I if I'm going to draw the comparisons to audition it's sure. not easy. Right, right, right. right, it right. Is, this is, uh, there's there, a little in addition to ghostly apparitions. There's yeah. a little gore too. Yeah, it's it's not super gory, but there's you know there's a there's a sack of bloody human parts kind of Ooh. a thing. Okay, um, that's gross. There's, that qualifies as gross. There's a lot of questions about whether there was, you know, who who did what to whom. Okay, um, okay. So there, it, it, it's got, got some whodunit. Uh, it's a beautiful movie to watch. Okay. Would you, uh, okay, so. Is it, uh, is it in my go, top 100? Is it in your top 100? Well, it's in the top, top 100. 100. I think, the top 100. Is it in your top 100? After seeing it, and it's not in my top 25. Yeah. Um, but I would not begrudge it being in the top 100. I think it might be really? in the right place. Wow. Yeah, okay. Good. The right place at number 80. Yeah, I think that's, okay. about, that's about where, I don't think I'd go much higher than it. Um, okay. I think that the, but it is. It is so well acted and so beautifully drawn out, and I think that it's got this gr- the great mystery that that pays off in the end. Um, okay, it it is a slow builder. So if you don't, if you're not, if you're a fan of the fast, fast, fun action yeah, yeah. horror movies, this ain't it. Okay, okay. A Tale of Two Sisters, two thousand three Korean film. Okay, next on the list we have number seventy nine, The Strangers from two thousand eight. And this is yeah, uh, uh, directed by Brian Bertino. Brian Bertino, yes, starring Liv. Tyler, yeah, daughter of Stephen Tyler of the Aerosmith, which has nothing at all to right. do with the movie. Right, and she was <laughs> save for was she was in she, the Hobbit. Was she, she in the Hobbit? Yeah. No, she, no, no, she was in Lord, she of, was the Rings. Lord, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she's been in a bunch of other stuff right. too. Um, which is interesting that, that she would do this film after Lord of the Rings because mm-hmm. it does seem like a little bit of a step down. Yeah, this is this is a low budget, <laughs> low budget film. Um, I thought uh, the Strangers when I first saw it was rather forgettable. Mm-hmm. I went actually. For the podcast, I went back and gave it a gave it a second look because mm-hmm. I thought, well, geez, maybe I was maybe I was mm-hmm. missing something. Um, you know, it's a it's a nice looking film. Mm-hmm. It's 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 a pretty looking film. Uh, the the actors effectively do the right stuff. Mm-hmm. They do what you would expect them to do as the, throughout throughout the course of the film. Although there is, you know, there was a couple things that sort of stuck with me where there was like a little bit of incongruency where the you know at the beginning of the film the boyfriend. Uh, the home abductee yeah. is rather loaded, right. 
uh, in the film, and this is yeah, and so uh, but well, before, actually, before one, he's lay, out, lay out the plot. I mean, the real, the real basic, the basic premise is this home is a invasion. home invasion, yes. home invasion, yes. prototype home invasion, prototype home invasion. A couple gets back from a wedding. Uh, there's lots of, I think, almost unnecessary exposition about the wedding and a lot mm-hmm. of flashbacks to the wedding. Does it, does it All, have- say, save to explain that uh, that the boyfriend of the two is is drunk. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they they create sort of this like romantic tension where he throughout the course of the wedding he acts, ends up proposing to live Tyler which is supposed to like sort of create this like sort of emotional connection to the character mm-hmm. but it doesn't really do much because so at what point does the stalking start I and mean, how far how far into the movie do, do uh, they do they start introducing kind of your villains fairly quick like I would say fifteen minutes in okay so yeah, yeah so like it's, fifteen it's, minutes in a girl shows up knocks on the door yeah. asks if Oh, I don't remember the the person she's asking for. She mm-hmm. says like, "Is Deborah there?" Mm-hmm. And they were like, "No, there's no Deborah here. Deborah doesn't live there. There is no Deborah here." They close the door. She goes away. Knocks again. Is Deborah here? No, Deborah's not here. Knocks again. Is Deborah here? No, Deborah's not here. Okay, at this point, it's getting a little weird. It's a little mm-hmm. creepy. They're in a remote. Um, they're in a, a, a remote sort of vacation home that mm-hmm. the family owns, and then you know, uh, lo and behold. Um, they, the other, the other two characters, uh, sort of reveal themselves. They show up and all of the tension starts to build and build and build and build. Um, interestingly, um, you know, the, the, the strangers, the, the three killers, two women and one male, assumably it's a male. You don't even really right. know if it's a male because he has They're all a, masked. Yeah, they're all masked. Uh, the the one, the two you, you are fairly certain they are women. The one you're fairly certain is a man. Well, there's, there's, I, think there's, there's I think the three names of the... Yes, like, they, like, like, they like, actually have names, which is kind of... Man in the Mask is yes, one. Yes, Man in the Mask. Yes. Pin-up Girl and Dollface. Yes, uh, which, is, which is kind of silly because nobody refers to them as that in the film. They no. don't refer to each other. And in fact, there's mm-hmm. very, 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 very little dialogue right. amongst... There, there's almost no dialogue, save for where is Deborah, and um, two other lines. Uh, you know, why are you killing? Why are you killing us? Uh, it's because you're here. And then at the end, do you ever sin? They they run in. The killers run into uh, a, a couple of uh, Mormon yeah. missionaries. The Mormon missionaries ask them, "Do you sin?" And she says, "I think something to the effect of like on occasion or something like that." Okay. Um, it, it struck me when I was yeah when when, when looking at this that. The the strength of the of the film is also its greatest limitation in right. that the the motivations are not are, are completely ambiguous. Right. That that this is that these seem to be chaotic individuals, uh, people whose intent is just to be terrorists to scare right. people. That's exactly and, and right. to hurt people. Right. And and that there's that they really it's not a revenge film. It's not a there, there's no real. Uh, manifesto there's, that they got. They're just they're hooligans who are looking to to, to destroy people. There is no exigence to their killing, and I'm okay with I'm okay with no exposition. Right. That's totally and absolutely well, fine. Where, where you have to think, where you have to think a little bit, and you you have to think through the motivations. In this case, it's completely void of exposition, where mm-hmm. you don't know why they're doing it, how mm-hmm. they're doing it, what it's for. I don't know if they disclose mm-hmm. any of that in the second film because I haven't seen the second film, mm-hmm. but. Um, I think it does. You're, you're exactly right. It's 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 its greatest strength is its limitation in that they don't give you any any mm-hmm. any anything mm-hmm. to 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 glom onto to to help you understand why it is they're doing this, which I suppose could be kind of titillating at some point. But you need a little something. Right. You need a little little something, even just a little bit of dialogue between some of the characters. And you know, I'm sure people would argue that that's not the point. The point mm-hmm. is that they're this the faceless, maskless mm-hmm. killers, but. Even in the case of, you know, Jason and Freddie and Michael Myers. Michael Myers, you know, there's exposition around it. So right. you can still have that character that's, right. you know, nameless, faceless, mm-hmm. et cetera. But there's some exposition around it that explains it to you. Yeah. So I don't know. I I yeah. uh, I think it's a, I think it's a it's not a bad film. Right. I think it's a pretty solid film. I wouldn't put it in the top one hundred. Right. And I say no no to the top one hundred. I haven't seen it, so I, I I can't I can't claim one way or the other. Uh, I did notice though that the director Brian Bertino yes claimed that he is not a fan of either slasher or home invasion <laughs> movies. So it's curious that he he pulled off one of the. Benchmark home invasion movies, right? Uh, for the list, so well. And as as far as home invasion go, movies go too, it's not that gory. 
Okay. I wouldn't. It's not. A, it's not a particularly gory film. It's not like cringe worthy, yeah. where you've got somebody, you know, tied up for five hours and they're, you know, poking stuff at him and there's lots of torture and you right. know. So how much? Is how it. jump scary is this thing? There's a couple. There's a couple little jump scares because the, the, the trailer will show. You know, Liv Tyler looking around the house, kind of going, hmm, wonder what's going on. Yeah. People, and then there's a guy standing in the background, and then right. he's like, and then she turns around and he's gone. Right. 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 They come in, they come out. Yeah. They're, they're like, like playing they're, peekaboo. They're in the house. They're not in the house. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, solid film. I don't know if it's top 100 worthy, given yeah. given some of the other films that got bounced off the list. I I don't know if I could put you know, it. If on I was going to put, I mean, well, there is another home invasion movie that is on here that is, I think, uh, a superior horror movie. I really enjoy. We'll get to that one at a later time. All right. But one that didn't make it that I think um, should have relative to home invasion was High Tension. Mm, yeah. Um, which I is, think High Tension is a better film. High Tension, for really sure, grisly sure. and uh, super intense movie with a. Third act that completely comes off the rails. Yep. Yep. All right. So what do we got for number 78? 78? <laughs> yeah. And Mike is going to have a big kick come out on. of this. This is one of the greatest <laughs> films by one of the greatest directors of all time. It's the greatest film that Eric had never saw. Right. And, and I can now ch- check this box off my list. This is Alfred Hitchcock's 1963 film, The, the Birds. Birds. And uh, it stars Tippi Hedren, Rod mm-hmm. Taylor, Jessica Tandy, Suzanne Plachette, and a very young Veronica Cartwright. Well, a very young Suzanne Pl- Plachette. Right. Who went on to do great things in Bob Newhart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, know, and, a and, hand, actually, and a handful of Disney films. I think what it is, I think this is great also because you see Jessica Tandy. I always think of Jessica Tandy as, as an, as as an insanely old, old. Right, right. And here's right. Jessica Tandy as a middle aged woman. It was right, like, right, oh, right. okay. Uh, she's been at it for a while. Yep. Um, all shot in Bodega Bay. Yes. Uh, and well, not all of it. I mean, well, the opening yes. sequences yeah, in yeah, Union yeah. Square in San that's, Francisco, well, that's which true. was that's true. That's um, true. But all shot yeah. in Northern California. Yeah. Uh, Mostly shot in Bodega Bay. Right. And they make a big point that this is Bodega Bay, yes. and what a kind of a bumpkin backwater town Bodega Bay <laughs> is, and that Santa Rosa is the big town. Yeah, right. Right. So uh, now it's probably even more true. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure. So, anyways, yeah, this was on my ashamed to admit that I hadn't seen it list. Uh, so, what did you think? What it's were your, a masterpiece. What were, what, what were your first impressions? I, you know, I think my first impression was Tippi Hedren is awesome as oh, yeah. a, and it's not just because it's a that it's a great she's a great actress. I, you know, I think she's a great beauty, right? Uh, one and and it's this was her very first movie role. She was a model before this, and yeah, right. And Alfred Hitchcock picked up uh, uh, picked her out of a uh, out of an advertisement and said, "I want her." Right. Turns out she can act, um, but her character is playing against type for most female roles of the time. She's a mischief maker. Oh, yeah, she's for a sure. she is uh, she's kind of this playful, naughty, but not. It's somewhat disruptive, somewhat deceitful mm-hmm. person, but she's but endearing at the same time. Oh yeah, right. No, she's great. So she's great in the film. She was great. Rod Taylor was great. Yep. Uh, that he plays the strong everyman, mm-hmm. but also with the sly sense of humor, and that chemistry was fantastic. And so oh, yeah. you get the the other thing. Not surprisingly, Alfred Hitchcock, great script. Yep. Um, and the reveals of the birds slowly builds. Then mm-hmm. you get the initial seagull collision. Yep. There's like, oh, that's weird. And then, you know, the the by the time it really starts building up speed, you know, we talk about slow burners. And I wouldn't say this is a slow burner because I think that yeah. it, it, it it's really by it by but about you, the but you get most of the scares sorry, in the third in act. In the third act. And there's um, some there are some truly terrifying yeah. scares in the third Man act. alive. That yeah. Where they like, where they go up up uh, in, up in, in the up, attic. Up into the attic. That, Woo! Yeah, Nelly, like, that is a that is a shocker. And and the, the birds are you, just, you just kinda go, don't picking his eyeballs you can, out and yeah, don't open woo, that door. Don't go. don't open that door. Um and the the scene with the chimney. Right. Where they're sitting in the living room yep. and and uh, uh, Tippy turns to Mitch. Right. Or to Ron Taylor. Like, right. Mitch? And you hear this ruffle, ruffle. And then just these birds come barreling out of the chimney. <laughs> right. And it's just insane. <laughs> and you're going, oh, my God, how do you do that? And apparently they say, yeah, no special effects. We just threw a bunch of birds in there. Right, right. And so I don't think you can, like, like, like the movie Cat People, which we have talked about right. before. Um, you cannot say... 
no animals were harmed in this thing because I think I think there was some animal wrangler just like throw another finch at her, <laughs> and you know the. Uh, I also thought the the other impressions that I had was how Alfred Hitchcock made a real deliberate uh, move to have um, both Tippi Hedren and Jessica Tandy very uh, prepared or or the or the dress made up. Yeah, kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Their hair was very. It's like. I don't know if it won an Oscar for best hair. I think it won. I think it won for special effects uh, it, for the yeah. for, for um, the, the the seagulls and all that kind of stuff. But well, they, and you know, they completely the, come unraveled. I mean, that's oh the yeah. Well, and the special effects are super dated by today's standards. But um, you know, looking at it from through the through the prism of you know today, uh, it's still really solid. I yeah. mean, it still creates the scares because yes. it is it is a weird mix mm-hmm. of sort of layered pieces of yeah. film. Uh, throwing birds at people, yeah. probably some animation yeah. here I and there. I would have loved to have been in a in a packed house in 1963 when they go out of the schoolhouse and she and she's sitting in front of the plague the, the jungle gym and mm-hmm. the crows slowly start building up on it. Right. And when she finally turns around, it's totally covered in crows. Right. The, I would have loved the audience reaction when that's, that happens. That is such a shocking scene. Yeah. That is such a shocking scene. And that's the kind of scene that I think is like so foundational to horror, mm-hmm. right? Because that, that that's the kind of scene that you see ripped off time and time and mm-hmm. time again where it's mm-hmm. like that, you know, turn away, turn back, turn away, turn back. Oh, my God. Everything's coming unglued. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what what a great film. And, you know, you can actually still – many of the pieces and parts of The Birds mm-hmm. are still available to view in Mendocino County. You can mm-hmm. still go to Bodega Bay. You can still mm-hmm. go to the church. You can still go to the, the house. Is the diner there? The diner is there. The house is there. The yeah. church is yeah. there. You can see yeah. all of them. They have – they're I, all like, you know, on yeah. the National Registrar yeah. of Historic Places. Yeah. Uh, it's it's really – it is yeah. pretty cool and pretty fun to go see. One if, flaw that I, I – that, yes. that or one, one nitpick that I have with the movie is the guy who lights a cigar – uh-huh. Where there's flowing gasoline coming towards them, and everybody's like, "Don't do it!" <laughs> and meanwhile, there is obviously there's been some sort of a horrible accident because there's a guy lying face down on the ground, and a bunch of people running to attend to him, and there's gasoline pouring out of the gas station. It's like, right, right, you can smell that. <laughs> Don't do it. Well, and you know what? You know what's so impressive too is the, or so prescient, I guess, is the the allegory to modern day. Uh, Russian assault on the United States, which is really what this was allegory for was, you know, sort of the communist infiltration is like no more clear than it was uh, 55 years ago. Right. right? I mean, it's, it's incredible to me to think that he was that prescient. mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it wasn't prescient. Maybe it's just history repeating itself, but I mean, you could draw out Mm -hmm. All of those exact same allegories on mm-hmm. you know Russian bots and the right. attack on U.S. election systems. Well, they could- it, that's the birds. <laughs> I mean, that is the birds in a nutshell, right? <laughs> they, they had actually a couple of times in the diner. They referred to it as a war on birds. Right, 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 so, right, right. Yeah. So that way, it's like I think that he was. He was a very clever man. I also love the extras where he talks about his movie. He is such a funny man. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. He's great. Uh, yeah, Birds, super solid, deserves to be on the list. I would argue probably deserves to be about 30, 40 places higher than it yeah. is. After seeing this, I, I would agree. It definitely deserves a spot on the top 100. Uh, I don't know if it's in my top 25, but it was really good. All right. Let's move on to 1973's... The Legend of Hell House featuring Roddy McDowell. Ro- I was gonna say, uh, I was gonna say Doctor Zayas. <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't Doctor Zayas. He was. Dr. He was Zayas. Doctor Zayas. He was another ape. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, The Legend of Hell House is. I think yeah, it's a good film. Yeah. Clive Revel. Yeah, Clive Revel. There's a, there's a couple, a, couple, couple ladies yeah. who are. Uh, who knows if they want yeah. to do anything else? Gail Honeycutt. Uh, yeah, it's basically it's, yeah. it's it's essentially like a four person play. Yeah. Uh, save for uh, an older gentleman, which is the the plot of the film. An older gentleman, a millionaire, mm-hmm. wants this group of paranormal researchers to go into their mediums. Yeah, their medium. Well, some some of them are, some of them are. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's there's a scientist and a couple of mediums. There's a physical medium, and then mm-hmm. there's a paranormal medium. Okay. Uh, and then the wife of the the scientist, the okay. researcher, who's going to suss out this whole thing. They all go to the house, which is allegedly the Mount Everest, yeah. the Mount Everest of haunted houses yeah. that Roddy McDowell had gone yeah. to 
20 years before and he was the only one that survived staying okay. the night. And so the old man, the millionaire, wants them to go and figure out the legend of the Hell House and they have to stay for four nights. <laughs> I don't know why four. So when I, when yes. I watched the trailer for this, uh, <laughs> the thing that stood out to me is uh, one, of the, one of the women asks Roddy McDowell, like, well, what did he do to make this house so evil? And then Roddy McDowell replies, murder, vampirism, <laughs> cannibalism, Satanism. drug addiction, addiction, <laughs> alcoholism, sadism, and mutilation. Mm. And bestiality. Oh, really? Yeah, I think, okay. there, I think he threw bestiality in there. Okay, too. yeah. It was a big, it was a big list of like big totally, yes, <laughs> yes. It was a big list of super crazy, debaucherous uh, mm. behavior that I, I don't know if I don't know if this was the point of it, or if they were mm. trying to draw out this like kind of like Aleister Crowley type character, mm -hmm. uh, where it was this sort of like satanic, um, this you know sort of wealthy satanic cult or whatever. But um, it's so, do they ever so do they do they reveal the presence of the of the ghost? Uh, kind of, sort of. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The ghost leaves leaves behind a little ectoplasm. Okay. Uh, a little goo. Yeah, a little goo, which they they bottle up. They bottle up the goo. There's there's a lot of like science and a lot of pseudoscience and a lot of like what again? What are you doing again? They bring in this the the, mm -hmm. the, the best part of the film is towards the end is the, or at least in the last act where they wheel out this computer which is <laughs> <laughs> which is like the size of a shipping container. <laughs> they wheel it into 1973 the computer. <laughs> yes, they wheel it into the lobby, <laughs> the lobby of Hell House. And uh, Clive, the, the uh, he explains that um, this supercomputer is going to be able to reverse the energy in the house and like suck up all the energy like a vacuum cleaner and like <laughs> dump it out into it's Ghostbusters hell. I I don't know. It doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense. There's there's a couple bits like that uh, in the film that don't make. A lot of sense and kind of, I think, uh, for for me at least, um, it really it really uh, it draws me out of the film because mm -hmm. uh, they're just so absurd. However, there's a lot of super great scares. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of super weird there's stuff. A, there's a possession scene that looks really compelling. There's a possession scene that's super compelling where um, she's she's effectively assaulted maybe raped by this specter that you don't see mm -hmm. and then all the people rush into the room to save her and she kind of like just turns as she's basically laying on the bed like like literally scratched up bruised bleeding um she kind of turns around and just starts laughing like but this sort of like joyous laugh uh that that scene was super, super terrifying. All right. Super terrifying. The film ends in, in you know, with like, clearly it was this like there was this sort of data dump of exposition towards the end where it gets a little <laughs> it gets a little bit much. It gets a little silly. It gets a little crazy. I mean, Roddy yeah. McDowell, Roddy McDowell does save the day mm -hmm. at the end. He's he's one of the people that does survive the Hell House. We won't tell you the others. Or other that survives the hell house but they they do eventually make their way out of the hell house um the the one the other the other the other great thing about the film is is obviously the house itself or the mm -hmm. set wherever they shot it is really wonderful mm -hmm. they also shot key to any haunted house movie key to, key to any haunted house film they also did this like they did this like little uh they use this little sort of device like they do in the shining where they say you know where they show you the day or the month mm -hmm. you know they did that repeatedly throughout the film mm -hmm. which i thought well maybe that's where stanley kubrick got that you know where they say december 24th 10 45 p.m yeah. and, and then, well and they and they keep, know, but they keep so what they do is they keep reminding you so they every time they do that they're showing the exterior of the house with usually like you know the, the creepy foggy moors in the background and you know the sun coming down and all that kind of stuff and generally speaking there's a cat there's this black cat that actually does play a big role in the film that's parked right by the house mm -hmm. um it's a solid film is it uh, maybe top 100? I'd go maybe, yeah. maybe. Like, like it's, it's like, like it's like, like, like I put it at about 100. Okay, because yeah. like like if you were comparing it against some of your the thing your your knock knocked off films. Yeah, well, like yeah, the brood. And, yeah, yeah, the brood and 
uh, House of the Devil, yeah. and yeah, I mean, there's there's a there's a, the the Tenant, uh, the Dunwich Horror. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of bunch of films that I don't think it quite matches up to. It is it is a solid film. It is pretty scary, right. yeah. but there's enough like weird exposition that just mm-hmm. doesn't make any sense that really takes you out of the film. Okay. So, what do we got for number seventy six? Six is a film that almost everybody listening to this podcast will know. Yes, uh, this is. James Wan's 2004 launch into horror movies. Was this his first horror film? Yes. This okay. is his first feature film. First feature Saw. film. Saw. Gotcha. And the Saw. Yeah, starring Carrie Ilways, uh, Lee Winnell, who's also the writer, um, Shawnee Smith as the final girl, Danny Glover, Ken Leung as the cops who are checking in, checking out the situation, and uh, see some also, and Tobin Bell as Jigsaw. Right, right. Um, so this is the godfather of torture porn. Right, 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 right. Um, not to put too fine a point on it, this this really started. It's not the start of torture. No, porn, it's not no. the start of it. Yeah, but this is this, this is, is but this is one of the this is one of the movies that broke the commercial threshold. Yeah. To encourage lots of directors to go. Well, it, do it, this. it took it out of the basement. It, yes. It took it out of the grindhouse right. and yeah. and brought it to the mainstream. Right. But this but this sort of made it somewhat acceptable. Yeah. This allows movies like Hostel to get made yeah. and yeah. and and for for movie production companies to to put more more money as opposed to say uh, something like you know Maniac or you know yeah. the really really yeah. tiny yeah. budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was you know this had a, had a decent amount of funding to it and it is. I think we, we talked it, about it, this. Is, it mostly pretty show, it pretty well shows. Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of the production value, the production is pretty solid. It's it is the um, worst case scenario kind of, or not worst, maybe not the worst case scenario kind of a thing. It's it's the uh, pushing somebody to. At what point do you lose your humanity and choose your self interest above societal interest? In other words. I'm gonna kill that guy so that I can live. Right, right, right. And um, and it's, I put this it's a in setup. the. It's this a, is the the. Uh, I, I also, in in addition to being sort of the the godfather of torture porn, this is also the godfather of suspension of 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 belief porn. Right. No, this is yeah. No, this, this <laughs> like is like you really have to. You really have to go. Okay, I'm just gonna roll with this because it's absurd. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is truly absurd. I think it it, it gains a, a, some plausibility visually by being sort of this. You know, they, it's they, so it's, gr- it's gross. Gritty, it's grimy. Yeah, it's, it's so it, that the basement is just so disgusting, and it's claustrophobic. There's blood everywhere, right? and, and it's like it's slime and, and grease and here's gross. A, here's your yeah. hacksaw. <laughs> here's your Get clock. To it. You know, Get it's like it. what are you gonna do? Um, this is I. I think. It, it does not score well on Rotten Tomatoes. It's it's a, it's got like a forty four or something like that. Yeah. And I, I think I think it's I think it's at the time I think for because it's, it got wide release. I think it was right. just too much right. for a lot of mainstream uh, film reviewers. But it is revered by horror movie fans. Oh yeah, no, uh, it's a, it's a good it's a good film. Yeah, I, I, I mean, although you don't get much jigsaw in this film. No. No, I like in, in some of the latter films, like they they are obviously yeah. like, oh hey, we they they they, they stumbled onto the fact yeah. that oh my gosh, yeah. this is a real thing. This is like right. this is Freddy Krueger. This well, is this is it. it. Like let's 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 play this up. But yeah, in the first film, you don't get a lot of jigsaw. No, it's the switcheroo. Yeah, uh, that that you know, jigsaw like a, turns out it's like it's, it's the guy that we thought it was dead. It's a quadruple yeah. switcheroo. Yeah, so at the end, so. Uh, real there's, twisty. There's many switcheroos, and, and that's and in, thus in your last, suspension of disbelief. Yes, yes. You have um, to dub triple suspend. The, <laughs> right. It's like, come on now, right? Come and on. So you know, I think I I listed uh, Saw as one of my favorite franchise horror pieces because I think actually the stuff that Darren Lynn Bousman, mm-hmm. yeah, friend yeah. of the podcast, yeah, that yeah. we that uh, He's he got he got very inventive. It got very tricks and trapsy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. it's you know certainly no one's going to win any dramatic acting awards for anything that you no. do in uh-uh. Saw. But nope. it's you know for the the I, I I I don't know that we need to see it go on. But I think it's a, it's got solid sequels. Unlike many, what are we up to on Saw Eight? I think we're at six. No. Uh, we'll get back to you on that one. We don't have our crack researcher here today, yeah, but yeah, we'll, 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 get, we'll get back. Ernie, <laughs> Ernie is not with us for this episode. We will get back to you on uh, the number of saws. I think there's a ton of saws. We might get back to yeah. you on that on a later podcast. Right. All right. So should it be in the top 100? Um, All right, where are you putting it? Where are you putting it? Should, is, is it where it should be? By popular demand, I think it's an influential movie. 
I think it's, I, I would I would say I, I would say so. Too. I think it's a little higher than I'd like it to be, but um, I think it's a '90s film. Yeah, like, I, I, not not the decade, but the like it should be in somewhere the, in, 90, ninety to one hundred range. Yeah, I, but I I won't begrudge this. I think it got like how many? I think it, this was one of those films. A lot of so, a lot yeah. of people liked it. Yeah. So well, we got it got it got three votes. Yeah, I think. I, I think I think it's I think it's good. I just don't think I would put it. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe nineties, maybe nineties. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a fun movie. It's it's good. It it's mm-hmm. uh, it is influential, as you point out. Mm-hmm. So we'll okay. we'll keep it. All right. So, so what do we got next on okay. the list? Number seventy five. So seventy five is going to be a curious one. This one's going to in, 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 to to bring up uh, the debate, right? Because it's it, this is a kids movie. This is. Coraline, yes. uh, from 2009, uh, the Leica produced. Brought to you by um, the House of Leica. Portland's, Portland's AKA very own. The House of Nike. Yeah. And <laughs> the house that Nike built. Directed by Henry Selick, who is also the director for Nightmare Before Christmas. Right. Uh, so it's a, for those of you who aren't aware, it's a stop motion uh, dark fantasy that uh, is about a little girl who uh, finds another world with alternate parents. Right. Um, and the although they do, uh, like it does a technique where it's it's not just stop motion; it's stop mm-hmm. motion layered on top of um, like a computerized background. Yeah. They yeah. sort it's of enhanced. intermingle yeah. the two, they intermingle the two together, which is they were the yeah. first the first to figure out how to do that in, in a seamless way. They they, they make artisan not movies. to draw too fine a point on. Yeah, it. yeah uh, it's oh oh my gosh, beautiful! Yeah. All their films are beautiful. Yeah. And Kubo uh, is beautiful. This is yeah. beautiful. Paranorman, which Paranorman. got a couple of votes, didn't make the list. Um, I would argue if you're, if you're going to go with like if you're going to go with a Leica film or a, chi- a children's film that has horror elements. You would have gone Paranorman. Paranorman's way yeah. better. It's a yeah. be- and Paranorman's a better film too. I think the thing <laughs> the, the, the thing that rings true for me for Coraline because we haven't actually we haven't done our our list of my first horror movie. Well, you know, we, for, for although we did like we did PG. We did PG movies, but Which I think isn't there necessarily will be, my first. There there would be one that it's like if I am going to introduce a young child to horror movies, uh-huh. it's like I want to see something scary. Right. I think this is a great entryway to. Those kinds of tropes, I think. Yeah. The, well, I, I think one of the reasons why is that this is for. I, I it didn't do gangbusters, Pixar like money at the box office because a lot of kids went and a lot of kids got scared and just like just, just left the on the, they they couldn't take it. So, uh, yeah. So Coraline. This was courtesy of uh, actually. Because we invited Kean Dowdy, our, our yes. young actor, he threw um, it he, in. He put that in there, uh, so I think that's you know I thought I thought we might get something interesting from him. Um, we did, and and Marnie Oyen, an old friend of ours, she who, threw it in. She's she does mom horror. Yes, <laughs> she's got mom. It's a, it's that's a, a whole is, other genre. <laughs> we haven't covered mom horror. So yet. button button eyes, creepiness, Coraline, seventy five. Yes, uh, good film. Yep, maybe not top one hundred. Um, I think yeah, I think it's it's in perspective. I don't know that it's a top one hundred horror film. I would have re- I've other have other ones I would like to have on it. I think it's an interesting take. I would so. put it as top one hundred. I would put it a top ten kids scary film. Yep, for so, sure. Yeah, for so sure. that that sort of begs the question. We're going to get to a couple more of the other ones later on. All right, number seventy four is a two thousand fourteen film, a recent entry from our friends in Germany, Austria, actually. Austria. Oh, that's right, because Vienna. The kids go to Vienna. Yeah. Uh, good night, mommy. Uh, which is a good film. Yeah. It's a really solid film. It's got a great little twisty end. It essentially mm-hmm. involves uh, two boys, Lucas twins. And, uh, two, yeah, two twin boys, Lucas and Elias, who are about what, like eleven or something. Mm-hmm. 11, 12, uh, their mom, they live in this very fashionable uh, country estate. Uh, the mom comes back from a plastic surgery, so you don't see her face, or you do see her face towards mm-hmm. the end of the film. Right. Sort of the last act of the film, you see yeah. her face, and then you see her face get <laughs> mangled. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, this is a good film. I wasn't super familiar with Goodnight Mommy. Um, it's pretty interesting. It uh, is flat as hell. Uh, there's no highs, no lows, really. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a there's a sort of prolonged, I guess you call it a torture scene. There's a prolonged yes. torture scene towards the latter part of the film, yeah. but it's mostly really flat. Like all yeah. the acting is crazy flat. The yeah. boys are almost zombie like. The mom is zombie like, right. and, I- and it essentially involves the fact that the mom has come back from plas- the plastic surgery, and the boys or boy mm. may not. N- uh, don't don't, don't necessarily believe that this is their mom. 
Right. And, and she start and she she does some things that would lead them to believe that. Right. And I think they I just, I just reviewed this movie uh, on the scariest That's things right. website. Go yeah. to the scariest things dot com website and check yeah. Eric's review because yeah. it's a good review. Yeah. And I and I think the, it's, the it's, description it's dead on dead the, on the sensation that I had was very early in the film. There's two things that happen. One, the opening sequence is the two boys playing in the field, uh, one, and and they're chasing each other around a cornfield. They're horsing around, and then it appears that something ominous happens. Right, and then it. Stopped. It pauses. You get some credits, right? And then it picks back up again, and the boys are going back home to greet their mother, who's returned. It's like, okay, right. so what happened? You got to pay attention. Not, not, not got sure. Got to pay attention. Yeah. It's one it, of those. It, a, it holds up. That it's but, a thinker. Yeah, but it, you, that sticks with you. you it, the, it, it's, it's a powerful enough moment that you don't forget it, but you're trying to figure out what just happened. And then there's a the shoot. Well, that, it's pretty subtle. Yeah. Hey, I don't yeah. know. If, I wouldn't yeah. say it's a powerful moment. Well, okay. I, I would say it's it's a moment that you got to pay yeah. attention. I guess to it's more powerful towards the end of the movie once you start yes. piecing this thing yeah, together. Yeah, once it all once the the mystery is yeah. disclosed, but it's yeah. yeah, it's 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 super subtle. But the way they, they slip that on in. I will say that there's this the the idea of potential energy and kinetic energy, right? Mm-hmm. The potential energy is something that's about to happen. Like I called it, the dropping of a shoe. Right, <laughs> right. Got, that shoe's got to drop at some point. Right. They hold that shoe for the whole movie, and that is yeah. that mommy doesn't recognize Lucas, one of the one of the right. boys. Right. And then you go, all right, we've seen this kind of a thing before, whether it's Sixth Sense or right. whether it's the others or yeah. you know any kind of things. Like, is this boy a ghost? Are you giving is it he, away? Or is he? A, is he? <laughs> is he a figment of? Is he? Eric might be giving it away. <laughs> no, it's not a giveaway because if you if you're familiar with these kinds of stories, this is yeah. a trope that you're waiting for the for yeah. an analysis of what happens because they they lay some real heavy hints about this, and you're you're fairly convinced that he's did you imaginary. did you uh, did you read up on the film before you saw it, and or did you no. did you did you pick up on the hints? Yes, I picked up on the hints. The hints were very heavy. I did not. Oh, you didn't. Duh. Oh, well, it was like why didn't why aren't you why aren't you giving giving him a breakfast? And yeah, it's like why don't you give Lucas the juice? Like, Come on. Or, or Lucas, the fact that it's like you realize Lucas that it's only ju- one of the boys is actually interacting with the mother. Right. Or the, they will do every now and then they'll throw a bone out there to show Lucas actually saying something, but the mother doesn't react. Right. Well, and and the fact that Lucas keeps whispering into yeah. Elias's ear mm-hmm. is also right. like a and good then, a, and a, Lucas a, a fairly says, good sign right. that. That Lucas might or not I, be I, there, or yeah, same. What, but it's the question in my mind is: imaginary friend, imaginary brother, or ghost child, or everybody's insane. Yeah, right, right, and, right, right, right. So those that that's the context, and it holds that context throughout the entire film. You don't get an explanation super, until very, very late. Holds it super tight too. Yeah. And and Elias, like if we were to do the creepy kids over, mm-hmm. well, Elias and Lucas, yeah. if we were to do the creepy kid, I would I would consider putting yeah. them on the uh, the uh, yeah. fearsome force from creepy kids list. Yes, I would. And I think, <laughs> but I think the other thing that happens is that you find you switching you, you switch allegiances between the boys and the mother, depending on because at some point it's like it looks like it's an abusive mother situation when in fact it might be abusive children. The, it goes back and forth. Yeah, I, we don't want to spoil it for you. Yeah, uh, tight. Good film. Okay. Top one hundred. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You're yeah. putting you're putting it on the top one hundred. I I, I, th- I think it's all a, right. I think Eric it's a says film. yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes to Good Night, Mommy. Two thousand fourteen Austrian Austrian film. Yes. Austrian flick. Solid movie. All right. Although I still don't know why the why in the hell they invited the. Uh, People from the Red Cross. Or that's why insane. Were, no, that was that's a huge plot flaw. Like, why the it's people like, from the Red Cross would actually walk go? into a house? It's <laughs> like, is like, it what is going on? Is here? that an Austrian thing? <laughs> Do they just like come on in? If right. it's an open door, right? Your house is my house. Right. That was weird. All right. What do we got for number 73? Uh, well, our second Korean film. Second Korean film. Uh, All right. Train to Busan, 2017. Super solid. Fun. Fun zombie movie. We both put it in our top ten zombie movies yeah. of all time. And this one also, I I put this on top ten dads. Top or, ten. Top, or, or top four. Or top oh, four that's dads. right. Top four dads. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that, uh, so we've that talked, we've talked quite, a, the dad quite is, a bit about Train to Busan in the past. Um, it is a good film. It's a, it's a zombie movie with character development. Yep. It's a zombie movie that does it, that it, it ramps up fast and it keeps 
going. And it's just like it's just like the train. It's relentless. It is You know what's great about it too is that, you know, some zombie films you you are you're the character reacting to the zombies in the apocalypse. Like the apocalypse has happened. This is like happening contemporaneously. This right? is the this is the this is like, the outbreak. Like it is unfolding right before your very eyes and it's unfolding super fast. Mm-hmm. And the zombies are super fast. Right. And I think that, you know, for given that it's a Korean film and we're not familiar with the actors, I think they give you some some characters that you can really latch on to. I'm mm-hmm. particularly taken to uh, Dong Suk Ma, who's the tough guy. He's oh, the, yeah, he's yeah, the, yeah. He's, yeah. The, he's, he's, great, the, yeah. he's the muscle-bound mustache, the guy with the goatee. And right, right, just, right. And he is like, he's, he's all action hero. Yep. Uh, classic That's, action hero tropes. And then uh, the, old, is, the old lady is great. Old, yeah. The and dad the, is great. The daughter is the great. Team, the team of young baseball the players. The baseball players are great. Yeah, there's a lot of really, really fun characters the, well, in the and, movie. And the asshole yes, uh, the uh, business corporate guy, guy yeah, yeah, yeah. who is a who's a fantastic foil yeah and and just and like he gets his yep oh my god does he ever get yep. his yeah that so this it is it's a it's a very satisfying movie it is gross it's not but super but, gory uh and super it, duper gory and it doesn't uh it offers i think a melancholy ending i don't think it's not yeah. it's neither it's neither completely uh, apocalyptic bleak like a well, when, when we talked it well no well, I think it is actually because when we talked to, when we talked about our top zombie films of all time I oh, dr- right, I yeah. drew out the allegory to the original yeah, out of the living right. dead because it does have that same kind of quality in fact right. well it's like like, like shooter don't shoot Shoot, yeah, shoot or don't shoot. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I definitely think it's got an allegory to the original. Yeah. The original. Yeah. Although I, I think that where where Romero's original film talks about uh, fear, race relation fear. Yes. Right. This one, this one might be more uh, fear of North Koreans <laughs> <laughs> or something like that, or or the fear of. But uh, as we know, now know, North, North Koreans like, don't need to be feared. No. They're it's good. It's like people. you open up the doors and it's just a flood, good, flood, flood they're, of bunnies. They're good people. They're, <laughs> they're just misunderstood. Okay, so that is that's our number seventy three <laughs> film, Train to Busan. Number seventy two is the nineteen eighty two. Oh wait, should Train to Busan be on the list? I say yeah, yes, absolutely, for yes. sure, one hundred percent. All right, number seventy two is the nineteen eighty two film Creep Show. Yes, <laughs> this, is on is, my, this is on my top twenty five. Top twenty five. Yeah, it's a great film. It's yeah. super fun. It's five parts, is that right? Five parts. Yeah, five, five different parts. Not all parts. of them are as good as the others. So it's not a trilogy. Well, you know, my fa- my favorite. Okay. Uh, so it's, yeah, so this is this is a, this is like a mini, mini horror festival within right. a movie. Uh, five separate stories yep. that are sort of like, so, uh, sort of woven together roughly. So we have the, 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 the five films. It starts yes. off with Father's Day. Yes, which is good. And then it goes to uh, the... The Lonesome Death of Jordy Verrill. Which is my... That's my favorite one. Oh, no, God. I love oh, like Lonesome Death of Jordy Verrill because it's, it's, it's Stephen King, man. Oh, he cannot act. <laughs> he cannot act. Um, my, uh, the Something to Tide You Over with Leslie Nielsen and yep. Ted Danson. Yep, yep. Uh, the, the, the Crate, yep. which is my favorite, that's which is one. Hal Holbrook and yes. Adrian Barbeau. Yep. Um, Can't go wrong with Hal Holbrook. And, uh, and then it closes out with... Um, they're creeping up on you, which is cockroach horror. Right, right, right. Which so, is also a good one. Yeah. So you know what's funny is is at the, so at the time in 1982 mm-hmm. they also released and I don't I don't own it uh, now. I used to own it at some point, but they released like a graphic novel. Yes. And it was sort of like I don't I don't know if it was a compendium to this or if it just like I think it was contemporaneous. Yeah, it came out contemporaneous, and I so I had that first, mm-hmm. and so I read all yeah. the stories first, and yeah. so for me like visually. Um, I I always cue to the graphic novel as I, as I'm thinking yeah. about Creepshow, but um, yeah, I Creepshow's a great, it's a it's a great well, movie. Our, our a, website brother Robert has yes. had a copy of Creepshow. Creepshow the the, the, graphic, the, the novel. graphic novel because and it was really like pre graphic novel. It was yeah, like before right. graphic novels became a thing. Well, because this was explicitly an homage to EC Comics, right? right? Exactly. You're, you're, yeah. you're, there was a lot of blood and gore, and there might have been a, a yeah. Tale, Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror, Haunt of Fear, all yeah. those, all those things, and they even do comic book splash kind of moments, right. and then they have these these elements where where they, where they freeze out the, the 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 swipe at the end of the, mm-hmm. the story will be a freeze frame of the, of a comic uh, mm-hmm. frame. 
Uh, so that's it, right. And they even had the discussion at the beginning with the dad throwing out the comic book. Right. Right. Uh, and exactly. it was like totally. And I, and my parents wouldn't let me have a comic. Like that, <laughs> no way. So I went down to the sleazy comic book store that sold you anything. And <laughs> <laughs> they sold it to me. Yeah. So the, um, this, because it's on, it's on my top 25. All right. Yeah. It belongs. It, it's, it's, it's belongs. There. It is so, it is so much fun. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's George Romero. Mm-hmm. So you got to give, give props there. And then it's Stephen, Stephen King's writing. It's like you, you collided, you know, two of the greats right. and together, it, which oftentimes, yeah. as we know, doesn't always work. No, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, and I, I, I think I would but also, this is, this is what, this is, this is an instance where an all-star, an all-star team worked. Right. With, you know, and I thought that the best performance, Hal Holbrook was fantastic as yeah. the, I think the thing with the crate, the story right. that I liked a lot, is that Hal Holbrook is uh, a man who who has confidence issues, right? And right. then he gins up a confidence, and he offs his wife, right? And by by death by death by bitey monkey thing, right, right, right. Uh, which was I, I I have to admit, and he tells which is great because Hal, Hal Holbrook, who's like one of the most confident actors of all time, right? right? Like yeah. playing somebody who doesn't have yeah. confidence, and the other one that I didn't. It, and until I saw it again recently, didn't realize who was in it was Ed Harris. Oh my gosh, you're kidding! Ed what, Harris, what? he does. He was in the. He was in the the uh, the Happy Father's Day. Oh, and interesting. he gets he gets a tombstone dropped on top of him. <laughs> um, but he he's doing this. He's da- there's, there's this disco kind of a, a yeah, group yeah, that they're yeah, playing yeah. off of boombox and they're right. dancing around the living room. It's like go check on and on Aunt Bedelia or it's like right. sends him up. It's like oh, I'll go take a look. And then he stumbles across the grave, and then the grave he falls into the grave. The grave pit thing falls on top of him. <laughs> awesome, Ed Harris. Before you were famous, <laughs> yeah, that really is that uh, definitely is a who's who of uh, of nineteen uh, seventies, eighties, nineties actors yeah. and actresses. Um, all right, so Creep Show belongs. Yes, seventy one Un- unanimous. Seventy one. Uh, seventy one is the two thousand five film Descent. The, yes, the all chick, mostly female. Yeah. Uh, a group of uh, rock climbers yeah. yes. and outdoor enthusiasts right. who decide to go out into the outdoors and go go spelunking. Go spelunking. Uh, this it, film's legit. It's the most claustrophobic movie of all time. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I mean, come on. I'm just I, like, I'll, I'll just get back to you on that one. Because if you... It's like... I, okay, I will admit... Okay, I know this is another one of those movies that I hadn't actually gotten a chance to see until recently. Yes. Um, yes and... No, it was yes, uh, two weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, close enough. Um, I had to I had to pause the movie a couple of times because I found myself almost hyperventilating. It was like... Oh, yeah. Uh, there are times when they're crawling into a space and they're stuck. Yeah. And you go, oh, because it's like... Because it's not just that you have the threat of these monsters that are in the caves, mm-hmm. um, but just the danger of being in the caves in general, and right. and the panicky moves. I mean, for the most part, these women are they, they play it super smart that they're 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 capable. They they go badass when they need to go badass, but right. there are moments when you initially find out you're in a room full of corpses and old bones of things that there's something something carnivorous in these caverns, including mm-hmm. human corpses, right. The, the the desire to panic and run at least initially kicks in and it's like you're running into a cavern system without good lighting and it's like and you've got crazy albino vampire monster blind, blind monsters I I also like that the monsters acted like animal mm-hmm. you know like mutant animal things that yeah. aren't they're not supernaturally powerful like a like say a, they're not supernaturally like powerful and they're not super smart no they're just um, they're just aggressive but, but the, yeah and and I think that when the that initial moment when they 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 take out uh, Holly the the, uh-huh. really, the 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 boisterous yeah uh, an incautious one right um and they're they're fighting over the body and one of the critters comes over and just does a does a like a, a a fullback plow into one of the <laughs> right, to, right. One of, to one of the girls, and they and then and then she goes at him with a pickaxe. Right, that's a great fight. That was now. A, why would you have a pickaxe in a? Uh, oh, I guess if they well, if no, you would, he's like you wouldn't need a pickaxe. <laughs> well, if you need to chip your way out of some things, if you need to chip chip in some handholds, I suppose. I don't I mean know. so like because the, they weren't ice climbing. No, so this is and they weren't mountaineering. <laughs> although they did have they did have some uh, good cl- the, the the climbing skills that they exhibited. The climbing skills, it's legit. 
Right. The, the hip flexing. Yep. The carabiner work. The, the, the cams. The, the, the carabiners. The belays. It's all, it's all legit. Uh, and this they, is coming, they knew their knots. Mr. Campbell here is a, they knew is their a mountaineer. <laughs> and, and I've done my, I did 10, 10 years of gym climbing. So I know yes. how difficult the things that they were showing, even if they're harnessed. 512 minus. Look it yeah, up. Yeah. It is just a, <laughs> that was a 512 minus. On a, on, a, uh, on a lead climb. Yes. With a uh, mutant albino vampire creature chasing you. <laughs> <laughs> I think Where you don't get to take a pause. I, I will agree with, I think Mike had mentioned earlier that uh, he had some issues with the ending. I too think that Sort they, of the, the, the last act. The or, last, or the... the Really, the last part of the last act, I it kind think, of just devolves into a sort of a the, silly action film. Yeah, the they set up some trust issue situations, right. and I think that they pushed. I think that was like, no, I don't, I don't think you go there, right? Um, right, and and you you like to watch I, it for yourself. And I think there, I think there was a couple different ways they could have ended the film that mm-hmm. I think would have been, mm-hmm. would have made it much more satisfying yeah. instead of yeah. like just going to an yeah. action film. They they did set up the dominoes for some dramatic tension uh, right. between the the. Uh, Sarah, the lead character, and Juno, right. uh, who was the expedition leader. Yep. Um, and and they they pay it off wrong. Yep. I think. Yeah. Uh, th- there is nice tension about who's in command of the group mm-hmm. in in the tunnels, and the fact that Hubris led her not to take the manual with her. Right. And Hubris led her to go. We're going to check out this cavern because nobody's done it and we want to be the first right right and that's and and that that goes to like survival tales like the everest climbing movies yep or it's like you really should have thought this through yeah be prepared to do these kinds of things all the outdoor adventuring things that they wanted to do they threw that caution to the wind and always be willing to turn around yeah if need be right all right number 71 the descent from 2005 should it be on the list or not yeah you're putting it on the list all right all right. Um, I would say maybe like pretty close. Yeah, I had. I think it was a lot of fun. I, but this is a movie that's also made for Eric, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a creature feature. Right. It's a survival tale. It's it's got it's, super great production, pr- pr- good production values, great and it's characters, got great char- dialogue, character arcs. Yeah. Uh, that they that for the most part, with the exception of what we're describing at the very end, mm-hmm. pay off. Yeah. Um, so I was thoroughly impressed, and I and I known a lot of people go, you got to see this movie. I it's in my video collection forever. And I just had yeah, yeah. got to put it in. All right, so let's go down our list again. All right, Tale of Two Sisters. We say sure, sure. You said sure. Yeah. I haven't seen Tale of Two yeah, Sisters. Yeah, I, I think Tale of Two Sisters deserves to be on the list. Strangers? Meh, yeah, I don't know. Probably. I not. have other ones that I probably like probably not. The Birds? Yes, for sure. About thirty positions higher. Uh, Legend of Hell House? Yeah, uh, probably maybe. Okay. Saw, we say yes. yes. Coraline is a is a weird one. I it think belongs it's a, on the it's mom a, list. It's, a, it's, a, it's an anomaly. The mom horror list. We're probably going to get some heat from Coraline, yes. but I think I do defend it as a gateway production to take your children to. Yes, absolutely. Uh, number seventy four, we have Good Night, Mommy. We both say yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great film. It's yeah. a really interesting film. Number 73, Train to Busan. Yes. Double, double yes. Two for sure. Up, yeah. For sure. I think that's probably, other than the birds, maybe our strongest vote in this grouping. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number 72, Creep Show. Yeah. For sure. Stephen King and George Romero. Yeah. And, and EC Comics. And EC Comics. Can't go wrong with that trifecta. And then number 71, The Descent. The Descent. Yeah. Yeah. So we are in. Maybe a little lower, but. But yeah, we're on. I, throw it I think from this point in, we we really are into solid movies. That oh yeah, uh, no question. I think I think you can quibble on some of these things, and you might swap in some of your other favorites. But I, you know, I, I don't think you can say that these are. You know, I I think Coraline's a, a a curious one. Here on out, we're splitting hairs. Yep, this is all splitting hairs. Here on out. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, folks. Uh, that was eighty to seventy one. Join uh, us. Yeah. Very soon. In the very, 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 very near future, we will give you 70 to 61 to 61. It'll probably come sooner because we're late on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God.